Hey, hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone, to the Course Ace Open 2021, the round of 16. It's all happening. And this is happening. You know what's happening? It's Greg, an AR7 slop dozer. No problem, dummy. Checks in the post. I'm doomsday, but uh, I'm joined by a lovely lad. You can't go wrong when Bubble Man's on cast. Good to see you, man. Oh, what a pleasure to be here. First time here. First time oh, yeah. on the cast. After a few weeks of um, absences due to tournament matches, finally found some time to hop on and talk about some circles. We're sneaking you in. So you'll wind up for when, when Bubble Man arrives. It's, uh, it's a big deal. <laughs> no, damn good match to you know, like jump on for your first cast, though. It it's does. Um, a really it, high level one. Yeah, it does seem so. It, uh, these, these guys, yeah, scary two teams. Scary couple of teams. And I mean, yeah, looking, looking at the lineups, I mean, you, you just cannot overstate how stacked AR7 Slop Dozer is, to my knowledge, um, if I'm remembering the lineup correctly. You, you probably are. I mean, whenever they turn up, they always have a, a stacked roster. Lots of uh, pretty beast Aussies on there, plus friends. Aussies and friends. That's essentially how it is, isn't it? The, uh, the AR X, X dozer teams we always see in tournaments. It's usually Aussie, yeah, Aussies and friends. All top level players, though. They have uh, Jordan the Bear leading the line with Lifeline, Raffis, Wolf Wolf Wolf, Ugati, Shiraha Yuki, Monk the Don, and Grand Senpai. I have heard a little bit of uh, rumblings. They've got a few players missing, though. Oh. So um, we'll see who turns up. We'll see who sits in the lobby to play. Should be good, though. A very entertaining lineup, as always. The banter is always strong from these guys. God, that, that's like the strongest thing, though. Just the banter game is on point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these guys. Uh, always got to trust but the then lads, on the other side, on the other side, Greg. You see the roster in a, a few tournaments. You see the team name in a few tournaments. And um, scary team, definitely. Saika, Raikaho, Skyrovania, Trail Mix, Kingling, Heyroni, Jack Pax, and Fumo. A lot of known names on there. Kingling, sadly, I don't think will be playing because he's at a meetup in Birmingham currently. Yeah. So you're missing out on Kingling, but... I mean, even then, though, that, that lineup is just really stacked as well, especially on, like, earlier rounds, which we are still in for the most part, although we are starting to get stuck into plenty of pretty tough maps, especially in the gimmick side of things. But it's still very manageable, even against a team, you know, like AR7. They're going to be fine, I think. So will we see the dozers bulldoze over Greg, or are they going to make pastry out of their opponents? Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, I did my best there. That was, <laughs> Mate, I that was, was trying to attempt. think of one and I had nothing. <laughs> I was taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I suppose that... as it is my first time here, uh, can you uh, run past the pick and ban phase for me, please? Oh, yeah, sure. So, of course, uh, in Course Ace, we use Map Draft, the Map Draft format that uh, Bubble Man actually pioneered, I guess, a couple of years ago. Uh, it is starts, a, start... It's a slightly edited version of it. It is. It's a little bit different. Same sort of idea, though. You're picking and banning all at the start of the game. Both teams get three bans. You can see the order that they are there from left to right. So we've already done the first two bans. And then both teams are going to be picking their first map followed up by another ban each in the order you see there. Then both teams will get two picks and then one more ban, so they both will have three bans and then they end with the last two picks. It's all left to right, it's very, very intuitive. Very intuitive indeed, so yeah, no, no warm-ups, no um, maps played in the lobby for maybe 10 minutes at a time. But then Everything played back to back. Players switch in. All that you need to do. So there's no waiting around. There's there's, and there's a lot of time to analyze these two teams as well. This pick phase gives us a bit of time to say, hey, Greg banning no mod one against AR7 Slopdozer. 
Yeah, we don't like jumps here. With with the skill cap, sure, maybe I guess it's a decent ban against AR7 slot dozer, but I think that's just more or less Greg don't like no mod one. They banned it last week too, so I think that's really more accurate. They just don't want to play no mod ones. The hidden two though, that's a flow aim hidden pick. You can see from the uh, the average stats down there, and uh, by the way, I like the change. It was showing the numbers before, but I like the the uh, the bar graph style. It's really just obvious to see immediately. Their hidden scores were far lower than everything else. Yeah, you can you can really get the the feel of a team's strengths and weaknesses with that graphic. And uh, Greg, their the no mod score potentially higher than. Um... AR7 slop dozers. Yeah, on the whole, yeah. I think slop dozer did play a lot more no mod last time. Uh, Greg only played one from the round of 32. I believe that's taken in all of the maps they've played at this point, though. I feel like Greg, Greg's skill sets may sit better on the mod picks. They have some strong mod players. And I, those numbers might seem a bit arbitrary to you, but I can assure you there are real, proper calculations behind them. It's not just an arbitrary rating yeah. by a, a board of uh, board of judges. Yeah, we all the uh, all the staff just sat by, went through each team one by one, and just put a number on. Oh, I think they're good at DT because they've got Emrek. Oh, let's go. Oh, I think they're good at hidden. They've got <laughs> Ekoro. Yeah, dude. Hmm, you're my friend. 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, I like him, so I'm going to give you a good no mod score. You have a farm map as your top play. 1 <laughs> out of 10. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, all his top performances are DT. He must be a DT player. He can't play anything else. You I'm have been right. mean to me in my Twitch chat before. 0 out of 10. <laughs> oh, no. Couldn't oh. go that far, could you? Mate, that's brutal. I believe that's based off of, like, previous average scores. Indeed. Well, the first pick's coming out. The DT4 and the Hard Rock 3. So Greg, Greg going for the... Uh, that's the Tech DT, I believe. The finger control of the DT. The Akira Complex. Have we seen that yet? It hasn't been very popular at all. So the first pick? It's a tough map to start things off. Hard Rock 3, though, I'm followed excited, up by Slap Dozer. Uh... I'm excited to see these picks come out. Hard Rock 3, and I mean, a comparable score from the round of 32, you'd, you'd think that it'd be Greg picking that, because Greg were actually the team that won the Hard Rock 3, judging by last round scores, 2.8 million to 2.4. What do they know that we don't? That's doubly interesting, considering, well... We, you know, we said Greg probably don't have Kingling this time, who is mm. the precision guy. So they are missing Kingling. I don't know if they know that, but, uh, you know, that probably I... does knock off about maybe about 200, 300k, maybe. I think they are aware. The Aussies are going to war on us unceremoniously and without Cassus Belli. Oh, yeah, of course they are, aren't they? They recently so, declared um, they war know, on the whole nation of UK. Yeah, they know everyone is away. So they'll know Kingling has stepped away from his PC because they're, they're not losing any number ones right now. So, yeah, they, they know Kingling has stepped away from his PC. Oh, my God, yeah. The strikers when we're all sleeping, man, because time zones. I can't believe it. <laughs> I think I lost one of my own number ones, actually, as well. Someone sniped me. I, I'm, I'm just like a pacifist on this, right? This whole UK no, right. Aussie snipe war going on. Well, I may have to retaliate. You've been dragged in. I may, I may have to. I do hear Grand Senpai. Yeah, I do has I do see Grand Senpai has some tasty looking uh, lower star rating hidden double time number ones. Ooh. I don't know if he has any of them left actually. I, the last time I checked was a week ago. They might have all been <laughs> taken by now. <laughs> Talking about um, lower star rating DTs, we got DT one picked as well by Slop Dozer and. Greg picking DT4, Slopdozer picking DT1. Well, different styles of DT, different tests, uh, different 
skill sets that are being tested in those picks. Yeah, they are very different. I mean, the DT1 is more of a pure double time aim map for the most part. As DT4 is very different. That's essentially finger control. It's not even 200 BPM. So mm. it's, it's very different sort of maps. The double pick though from Greg, no more two in the free mod one. So that's fairly standard streams going into like, like spaced triples and low AR sort of flow aim. Some one sixes. It's two different maps actually there, back to back. Free mod one's kind of an interesting map. Seeing it a lot, even though it is, it's lower AR than nine. It's AR 8.8 .8 base, but it's seeing a lot of play. And not many people are like over modding it. You know, you may see a couple of hard rocks, but surprising lack of people over modding that on hard rock. Yeah, maybe people starting to get more comfortable with the slightly lower approach rates. And I, I say lower, I mean comparatively lower because you tend to find maps at 9.5, 9.6. So 8.8, .8, it's close enough to 9.0 9 that you can kind of switch between the two pretty easily. We're getting into the last set of bands. No more three was picked before then. That is the tech pick in a Vibra, the real lazy tech map, which is a no mod three in this tournament because Duke is all looking to change the meta there. But yeah, uh, tech that is. Ooh, three mod three. That's the CS5 AR8 band from a uh, slop dozer. We haven't seen any low approach rate at all yet, like picked or banned. It has not been interacted with until now. I wonder why. Very late to see something like that banned. I'd like to point out that they have banned a um, Kirby remix map, so they're immediately not my friends. Ah, uh, poor Yokes. Not a, indeed, not a real Kirby remix. It is a Yokes Pie um, homage to Starred Kirby himself, but it's close enough that you can you can call it that style. It's in that style. Yeah. It's honestly a really good like recreation. Really close on the patterns. I've played a few, you know, played a few Kirby tribute maps. And they're good, but they don't tend to be quite there. But Yokes has it pretty close. There really is just nobody that can map like Kirby. No. It's just it's just something you can't really recreate. Unless you pick Kirby's brain on it. Hey, DT2, the final ban from Greg. Banning out that stamina. 225. Pure stamina. It kind of feels like... Uh, it's, it's an L cheer map. It kind of feels like Major Demon, except nerfed quite a bit. And I guess not yeah, quite as consistent. Speed. Yeah. Similar sort of patterns, do like, But do like me a stamina map. Fortunately, we won't... Unfortunately... Get my uh, diction correct. Unfortunately, we won't be seeing it. Would have loved to see it, but thinking on a little bit, thinking Slop Dozer have the more consistent players on higher BPM, better stamina, which I don't know if that could be said. I think the teams are pretty even on stamina, just looking at the players and from what I know about them, just... Greg deciding, nah, uh, it's not a favourable map for us. And no mod 5 followed up. Pick from Slop Dozer. No one liked that map for the first set of games. Like, all it feels like all the way until, like, late yesterday's games, it was banned so often. It was banned and never picked, but it started to see more play now. We've seen it a few times. The uh, speed pick in no mod, 242 bursts and just constant taps and little bursts for two minutes non-stop it's finally starting to see some play it took a while seemingly maybe they see the dt2 ban and they say hey they don't want to play stamina let's let's try and test their stamina but of course the no one five not quite a stamina intensive it's it's much more about burst stamina than longer stream stamina it's a very different sort of thing. 
We're still around the same ballpark. Good the follow-up pick, the event. potential, the potential final pick before tiebreaker will be no mod for the circle tech pick, or Breaking what up. I assume is the circle tech pick. Yep, yeah, it is. Captain one, uh, underworld Utau Tai. Kind of higher BPM, 155 BPM, but the patterns are very what you'd expect. Some flow aim into sharp corner aim on that lower BPM all the way through. It's been We've really been popular. Technical. Lots of control over your cursor to be able to change between flowing and snapping and wiggling and moving awkwardly. It's a good one. This should be what? a good match, shouldn't it, Doomsday? Oh, this should be so good. Even if, you know, Greg are missing, you know, not missing Kingling, but they have, they have the power in that roster. And at this level, they're going to be fine. By the way, guys in chat, there's a prediction going on right now. If you want to try and prove us wrong. See who the Oracle is in chat. Drop your points in there. Let us know what's up. Looks like at the moment, people are definitely going towards the, the superstar team, but I would... I would think twice. I would be careful about that because I don't think it's uh, quite that one-sided in my opinion. This should be really close. It's definitely not clear cut. Picks are locked. We're off to the races. Here we go. DT4 is the first map to be played. We should be um, switching over to the play scene soon. about to happen and starting off with I can't a wait. rather spicy one yeah spicy start to this in a stinger missile 195 bpm finger control mild slide attack the drops in this have some some meaty tap rhythms to them and accuracy is tough to manage on this accuracy is a huge factor and anyone that can get a really high ac is going to be worth a lot in accuracy alone I'd say it's one of the harder maps in the pool. Would you agree? I'd, I'd say so. I've, well, I, I'm very lazy with my pool practice. A lot of the times I just practice the stuff that I know I'll be in for and then and then leave the stuff that I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I want to practice other tournaments as well. So. Fair enough. <laughs> I got the schedule packed out. You've got to try and yeah, ration had, your time. Yeah, I had a... I had a block of about five hours of tournaments yesterday and thankfully the latter two got moved but yeah I, I did pack out quite a bit so i can't say this is one i've paid too much attention to in my practice for my match but you seem to do your from what i hear game, about though, it because you it oh the, the only map i was in for we lost oh <laughs> <laughs> well your team had your back Oops. you had the moral support yeah Right, here we go then. So winners bracket match this, if that needed to be be said to these two teams. But best of nine, one set. So no messing around with sets. One game, best of nine. Rough start here from Greg, you know, with the uh, drop coming in. Three of the FCs going. Jack Pack's holding on to decent act, but he does lose his FC. Just oh, along the dawn with the FC. Then. And then another three minutes comes in. Jack Pax is now gone. Jordan the Bear and Shirayuki as well follow him. It's just Monk. The Don himself. Donimating. He is that was his stream title. He gets full uh, credit for that joke. But he is currently putting his team on the on his back. He's going to want to stop the big DC players, yeah. He was uh, eyeing up the DT picks when I was casting with him yesterday. Taking some notes. We didn't see this one though, but uh, good to see you guys practicing. That's a, definitely a good play and it might just be all they need. Although that break does put Slopdozer behind on combo advantage. Yeah, harsh miss just before a slower section to build up some free a combo. 300s, 400s across the board except for Monk and that's going to... Or could be vital. The 
later sections. Two more missed or less one. like the first one though. It's pretty hard. We are seeing the breaks. And a shared miss. Jack packs a monk. There is one combo against two. Greg now in the lead. They're pulling it back towards them as long as they can keep the accuracy. But Psyka drops a combo. Raph is the anchor. Holding through that second drop section. He needs to hold though. It's so close. It is within striking distance, but maybe not anymore. Combo's consistent across both teams, and it's a point for AR7. Slop Dozer on that. Scary one, though. S rank from Raph is 94% S rank. One slider break. Crucial play as well as Monk to keep them ahead at the beginning. Yeah, hugely important. Like, comboing through that first section and Raph is comboing in the end section was the difference. Just those individuals doing their bit on the hardest sections. But apart from that, though, I think Greg probably had the better team performance outside of those two individual just standouts and those yeah. moments where it mattered, right? They had a much more consistent team performance from them. A team around about 100,000 in difference between all the players, so... Yeah, they had they had the consistency, as you said. Yeah, Rafis stand out, Monk stand out, and the range of their scores maybe 400k, but combined they total more than Regs, and thus they win the point. It's all you really want, isn't it? That's how it works. Yeah, something a bit different now, though, or oh, very different. Hard Rock Three, the Precision, coming out here first pick from the Slop Dozers. This, to me, feels like a Hard Rock 1 jump map, but on CS 6.5. That's really what this feels like to me, so it's got quite a high level of just, you know, comfy mechanics, but on that smaller circle size, which may help many players being a bit more comfortable, not very linear, like maybe you see some of these maps being, or more, you know, gimmicky or streamy. This is pure just comfy mechanics on small circles. And is this faster than DT4? Is it? Oh. Or at least the same speed? Yeah, it's basically the same speed. It's, it's two BPMs lower. It's the same speed, essentially. Really quite funny to say the CS 6.5 pick is the same BPM as one of the DTs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a straight up 180 on the skill sets required. Gonna want players who are just quickly who can settle into this new skill set. Completely abandon the muscle memory, the snappy slider techie. Fast technical aim and, and, and they just drop it and go straight back to precision and control and Jordan the Bear, Raph is Monk the Dun Dun? Don? Addiction's terrible today. And Shira Yuki all staying in. So can they adjust? That's the question. Oh, let's see. It's, it's... oh no, lifeline. You're gonna sneak him in. Swap. He's uh yeah, he's apparently just finished another game, I guess. I'm trying to delay it out. And a, uh, a good timing for that. Oh, for sure, when it comes to a map like this. No map level, apparently. Oh, dear. <laughs> I mean, sight reads are pretty strong. I mean, I think this map is pretty sight readable, I'd say. It's one of those maps where I think you can get away with it. Lifeline with his you know, level of mechanics. He's going to be just fine on this. That said, though, I find Corsairs to be particularly unfriendly to sight read. Like even some of the standard maps do yeah. tend to have some shtick to them. You can't get away with not practicing. At all. Even the maps you think you can get away with not practicing, say uh, Nomad 1, DT1. You go into a match usually and you think, oh, this is normal, boring. But then bam. There's some anti-aim or something. Or a a spaced triple somewhere that you've completely caught out by. Exactly. 
it's, it's always something. They, they always just try to make, you know, even the standard maps unfriendly <laughs> to, to non-practicing players. I like that. The age-old slow slider in the middle of the map. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, they love to do that. There's a few in this pool. There's a few. Just, yeah, so there's a uh, yeah, lifeline popping in. JTB as well, Jordan the Bear, slipping in. Some Fumo as well, joining for Greg. And we've Heyroni as well. Quite a few breaks in the early rounds, though, from both teams. It's taking a while to get used to this style. There were quite a few early breaks, especially in like the first 20 combo or so. As I mentioned, very difficult to switch between the snappy DT technical aim to straight precision control over your cursor. Lifeline jumping in from another match and finding the most trouble so far. Pretty good accuracy for him, but the aim not quite there. Greg struggling all the more. Fumo, Heyroni, no combos. Currently firmly on the back of Raikaho and Saika. As Fumo and Heyroni miss again. Raffis is down though, and Saika trades. A favorable trade but not one you would want to make. Yuki's combo also falls. We've got a relatively stable Ooh. score progression here. Oh. FCs are gone, both of them. Oh dear. Oh, they're all gone. It's with the slop dozer right now though. Ah, oh, it's unfortunate it for Raikoho. That accuracy was really good as well. Definitely what you want to see if you are a slot dozer. You're in the lead, you have the combo advantage. Lifeline settling in, finding his stride, and now with a 500 combo. Third of the map left to go. The longer everyone over there holds their combos, the more of a margin they're going to win by. 300 combo, 600 combo, and only 200 on the other side. Greg. Not quite able to repeat their victory, their highest score from the round of 32. The no map, ga map gaming, pretty strong right now. Lifeline recovering excellently. It, it was a pretty scrappy map, to be honest with you. Uh, lots of misses from maybe some players you wouldn't expect, but shows how hard the map pool is. But Lifeline showing that recovery very nicely after coming in from his other game. He's warm, he's ready to go. Ready to play. Raiko, I think, splitting his combo in half. He's built up another 500. He does miss right before the end. Lifeline drops the combo he'd been holding, but he's done enough. 690k from him. Oh, 700k. Sorry, I missed the spinner. Yeah, spinning like a like performance. On it. Nicely done, yeah. Slipping in there. And for these mechanics maps, lifeline is going to be super important, especially as the tournament goes on too. Raikoho, though, with a great run himself. It was an unfortunate break in the middle. You know, he would have had about another 300k if it wasn't for that slip, but even then, it wouldn't have mattered. Good play, though. The second they reverse, all into... a double pick, though. Yeah, another of their own picks. Man, it's, it's kind of refreshing to see the DT1 so far not be AR9. Maybe I'm just slow at reading, but we haven't seen an AR9 DT in this tournament yet. And this one is no exception. This is AR 8.7, but it is the aim-heavy DT pick, which uh, Slabtoza have, have the players to deal with that extremely well. But I can imagine Greg shouldn't have a massive issue with this. Maybe... A full four 
It's going to be tough to, to uh, get a win against Slobdozer though, but they should be competitive, I feel. Yeah, a map, a map like Hard Rock 3, definitely a map where you feel the loss of Kingling, and I suppose DT1 as well. He has the skill, he has the mechanics for this, and him not being here is definitely one of the four players they would have wanted to put in for this. Not present. There's more... There are more players that are going to be fine on this compared to something like the Hard Rock 3 though, right? There is though, yes. Definitely. It's a, a much more comfy pick all around. They can fill fill their roster out. Kingling, yeah, definitely easier to replace on this map than Hard Rock 3, say. Jack Pax making his return. After a nice performance on the DT4, but this is a whole nother kettle of fish to that one. I think for the most part, though, lineups staying very similar for this. I guess it's not, not too surprising. Another mechanic-centric map. Lifeline going the wrong way around that slider. <laughs> Should we just uh, laugh at him for sight reading the pool? See, this is why you don't sight little... read Corsair's cool. pools. Can you imagine the scenario if that decided the map? If everyone else FC'd the map now and a little bit of missed combo from Lifeline is, is the deciding factor. That'd be tragic, wouldn't it? Imagine if that happened, Bubble Man. That would be completely tragic. It's cough. I mean, I think even even at this level, though, a, a seven-way FC on this would be pretty insane. And we're not going to see it. Hey, Roni just pricks. Oh, dear. I think he overtapped. I think he expected... Um half note but there was a there was a full beat gap between those notes stacked on the slider and he he just taps too early and the lead flips lifeline finding no trouble with the rest of the map jtb dropping yeah i'm slightly slow a bit too that's rough and we flip flop again he misses a second time focus gone as does Lifeline and Shira Yuki as well. Raiko who trades, but that's a favorable trade for them. That's two combos for one. They're getting out the second chorus, and it's with Greg. Two FCs and a recovering combo over Slopdozer. They're in a good spot as we get into the solo. Well, they do lose the recovering combo. Hey, breaks. Still two FCs, though. And it's going to get to a point soon where it is unassailable. They are 350k in the lead. Oh. Sorry, team, says Lifeline. Oh. JDB breaks again. Trade with Fumo. It's a very favorable trade for them. It's one to one. Yeah, it's 400k now. That should be it with the uh, outro to go. Jackpack swings it once again on the DT, showing up. Top score for his team. And he was so important. So important. He's going to be happy with that. Very spooky player, Jack Pax, actually. I remember OC Mercenary shop qualifiers, and he just sat in the lobby and cracked out FC after FC. I think he qualified top eight for that tournament. Oh, damn. Quite a, yeah, quite a spooky player. Definitely a name to watch out for in tournaments, and it is his prowess that puts that point on the board and it's one point for them against two for Slopdozer and now moving into Greg's next pick and their double pick so yeah points uh, a break point each one for either team the next pick coming up here you know picked by Greg so with two picks in tow they have a good opportunity to take the lead back the number two it's a fairly neutral pick, being the flow aim pick, and a fairly comfortable style. It's very snappy though, you know, basically stacked notes into full spacing streams on a you know, moment's notice. We have seen a, 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 even some very good players 
struggle to deal with this in this you know in the match. So even though it is comfortable, it has been quite volatile this pick, I think. Team scores haven't been massively high on it. Yeah, there's 185 BPM streams. That boy Alden. You know, the flow is comfy, but it's the velocity changes that catch people out on this. Plus the spacing can do, because it does get very spaced. I mean, it's, this star racing, that's, that tends to be how it is. We're getting up to the slightly scarier star ratings now. 6.6 6 stars on streams. You're going to... See, every, every so often you're going to see them not touching the circles. Not quite in the, the follow point streams territory yet, though. We're a little bit away from there. So that's when it start, starts getting real, though. But, but not yet. I have to show some mercy to play. It's only round of 16. And Senpai in for this. His first appearance for the Slop Dozer team. And there we see that spacing increase. And I think that's a miss for Shiharuyuki. Yeah, it was. The stream section doesn't really stop, though. It continues to go for a little while. Another spacing increased. Players handling it. A little bit of a lull now. Very short while. It's with Greg, but not by much. Oh, grand breaking on the triples, oh, though. That's brutal. Either moving too soon or not having the last note on one of them. Very unfortunate. Raikaho finds a miss to trade, but Lifeline and Shirahayuki. That supporting combo and the full combo are down. It's three to one. Again, Raph is doing his utmost. He's got the SS right now. Yeah, Raph has been standing doing it in this against game so far. Yeah, standing against three combos. Two now, Jackpax drops. And that little, you know, spacing change, that little aim section, just it saves it a little bit. Yeah. And Senpai loses the recovering combo. Higher spacing, doesn't catch anyone. A little bit of a zigzag stream there. You can straight line those, it's very difficult. Especially when you're seeing it for the first time. The supporting combos are being built up. Shirahayuki and Lifeline. Both now at 700, but oh, Raph is, Raph the is. SS is gone. That's it, surely. The combos are really K's so far down. over to the left side. Psycho, though. He's got it. Jack Max and Raikoho. F seeing this ending really nicely. That should seal it, man. <laughs> Raphis was doing his best, though. He was popping off, man. He was holding SS for most of that map. You can really see the difference in the skill level on this pick, though. The yeah, difference in said. comfort. Yeah, it really is. A little bit surprising, but definitely, yes, Lopto's a... The backup players are definitely not having a... Terribly good time on this compared to Greg, who have a full team of players who are pretty comfortable on this. It's been miss aims pretty much from all of them on the misses. Not just, you know, the little silly misses you get on maps like these. Definitely a really good pick in this instance, I think. Greg taking their own point. That was their own pick. Grand Senpai uh, freezes a little bit, but won't change the score at all. Saika bringing home the FC. It's a 99 FC as well. Clean as you Very like. Impressive. Got a shout out though, Lifeline, with that 92% combo gain. I respect that. Yeah, so he what... brought that back. Just a single miss. Close to the start. 
can't really be called a reverse choke because it was about a third of the way in, but... Getting as many points as he can. 100 is more points than zero, especially when you get to hold the combo as well. Just, the adage, just don't miss, it's... You know, we might make jokes about it, but it's true. Yeah. Although 90%, you are pushing it a bit. <laughs> we was, you know, seeing the 90% full combo is it gives you it gives you mixed feelings, but I think 92, that's that's uh, that, that'll do, you know. Yeah, the, the borderline A S rank. You can't really be you can't really be too mad if if you no. see an S rank at the end. If you see an A rank, it, it gets a little bit hmm. What happened there then? It's like hmm, yeah. Something along the line went wrong here. It's a comeback, actually, so far from Greg, you know, dropping the first two picks, losing their own pick, proceeded to take another break point, claw the way back to 2-2, and they have the pick in tow, being the uh, lower approach rate, you know, lower BPM, like, bursty free mod pick, spaced triples, lots of spaced triples in this, and some awkward aim. Some one sixes as well, but the one sixes are all stacked quads. They're not too bad to read. It's mostly about the awkward aim and the spaced bursts throughout. Definitely interested for this one. I know that Slopdozer banned the reading hidden. Free mod does generally tend to be more towards reading than it does towards mechanics in well, in, in a generic sense. Yeah, definitely in this tournament, they have been very reading-centric, unless you put the hard work on. Pretty much throughout, uh, they've all been lower approach rates. There's always been a density element for no mod mm. or hidden. Like, will even... we see any extra hard rocks? It doesn't look like it. It looks like Jackpack's... Jordan the Bear, That's nope, one. an extra hard rock. Umo and Raikaho both taking it, so an overmod from Greg. We haven't seen many on this. We haven't seen many overmods on this on hard rock. I guess, you know, because of the aim, the mechanics just add a lot to this when you put the hard rock on, even if it is easier to read. But I imagine that would still suit many of the players. So we are seeing some. A double hard rocks, but not usually any more than like two per team. We see the first instances of the sixth bursts. Putting the bear on the hidden does drop first, but Psyka misses, followed by another from Jordan. The advantage to the picking team. Got three combos against two? Question mark. Yeah, sure. You, that sure was you directly just after a, uh, yeah, That was directly after a break. The thing is, Lifeline's comboing, but the accuracy right down. I mean, you showed that you can combo even if the accuracy is low earlier, but that does show a miss could be imminent for Lifeline. It's like it with the early break, but it really is with them right now. It's, it's the double hard rock players comboing for them as well. And Fumo's low on Ak. It's kind of tentative, those FCs. Apart from Rafis. Oh, my co over the break. There goes oh, one the for Greg. Note. The last note of the section. We see Troll from uh, Psyker and Int from Jackpax. I don't think they're doing too badly. No, Not Jack badly Max enough to warrant fight. that anyway. Although at the moment it may not be enough. This map's pretty hard on hidden. But uh yeah, Lifeline and Raphis gonna be pulling it back. But Lifeline, it's gotta hold his combo. Oh, Raphis breaks no mod, okay. That's gonna be interesting now, it's really even. It is even, but higher supporting combos from Slopdozer, 300 for Jordan the Bear and Shirahayuki. Packs back up to 200, but it is the FC versus FC that's keeping this even and slightly leaning towards 
The Slopdozer team and Fumo with a miss is Ooh. going to tilt the scales tremendously. 100k already. Pure Hayuki drops a supporting combo, but there's still 400 on Jordan the Bear. As long as Lifeline holds 95%, his accuracy has come back. Yeah, much more comfortable now, clearly. Much more settled. And it was so important because the yeah the supporting combos are dropping. Oh, Lifeline breaks! Uh, there's, there's nothing left on the map, though, so I don't think uh, it's going to matter. Just or a will short... It? Just a short outro. It's not going to turn that quickly. 100k in this length of time isn't possible. It no. will be another break point in this match. Couldn't Greg, you can see pick. why they picked it. Yeah, it was close. Like I said, there wasn't much in that at all. It really just came down to Lifeline popping in. The Hard Rock Gaming, the 800k. Best score in the room. So yeah, the Slop Dozers can uh, give Lifeline a pat on the back for that carry. Indeed, saying, "Hey guys, I uh, I heard you I heard you needed a big score," and uh, yeah, he he got a big score. It's like I got you. I got this red mod. It's pretty good. Let's you aim. You don't have to read much. And I've got the aim to do it, and he did it. Really good spot now. For the uh, the slop dozers double pick and potentially a double pick to the victory if they win both starting out with some of that tech though 176 bpm slider tech and cut stream tech mapped by real lazy in his trademark style which is a style that many of these players are going to be very familiar with i imagine but man there are some hard svs in this the first half of this map has some tough High SV sliders with ticks in them that have caught out many a player. Well, you answered my question for me. I was going to ask, are there any slider ticks in this? Yes. Might be one to look out for. We'll be seeing zero misses, I'm pretty sure, on a lot of these players. Definitely a map that you are prone to... Uh just mis-aiming the head of a slider or, or not following it fast enough. A lot of focus on this, a lot of uh, control needed over your aim, and a lot of brain power needed to keep it going in the direction it needs to be. Looking at the last tech map these two played, the scores were dead even in last week's map. I'd say this map is quite a bit harder than that one, though. It's round of 16 now, we're getting up there in skill. <laughs> Lifeline, we see it, he follows the slider too quickly and misses the repeat. Yep. <laughs> you can't be lazy on this map with these SVs, man. And here we go, getting stuck in here. Getting stuck in, it's the same story as uh, a few other maps. And there's a tick. Three players missing it, Shiro, Hayuki, Hironi, and Jack Pax all dropping their combos. Raffus and Lifeline following up quite quickly afterwards, so it's not quite an advantage. Fumo drops one to one now, Jordan the Bear and Saika. The advantage, the lead, is on Greg's side, especially now that Jordan the Bear has dropped his combo. Saika follows it up. They're all gone. They're all gone. It's all about who can hold together their combo for the longest, and Jack Pax, Fumo <laughs> doing just that, holding 200 into the break. Hundreds for three players on Slop Dozer, but two, 200 combos. No, no, only one. Fumo's was 100, so a very slight combo advantage for the players on Slop Dozer, but when I say slight, I mean minuscule. It's not going to move the lead very far, and Lifeline drops. All right, more Greg. bit here. More cut streams, though, than SVs, but still very mixed here in this next drop. The supporting combos down here. Only we're in Psycho. Psycho. Sure, Hagiki follows it up in the chorus. 
We're looking to get some large combos now if any of these drop. It will change the game. It will change the landscape of this pick. It's looking like a breakpoint so far here. Only drops the supporting combo he'd been building. It's Psycho Psycho Breaks. It's with Slop Dozers. The lead will flip. It. Accuracy here. It's close. It's close enough that it's in within grasping distance for either team. Anything happens in this outro, it could switch immediately <laughs> and it won't happen. It will be a late last second comeback on their own pick. AL7 and Slop Dozer take it. And you know what I said? Lots of players having zero misses. Five, Five. of them on the board. Five S ranks. Yeah, that's this map in a nutshell. We've got to point out Jack Packs, though. That yeah. accuracy is very good. Almost 99% on that is incredible. I imagine he'll be kicking himself for that slider break, though. Because, uh, yeah, that, it was the smallest margin. I absolutely held them into in contention during that. And on to No Mod 5. It is match point. One more point. Well, the Slot Dozer crew will seal this match in their favor. They've done very well taking that break point off Reg, and this is their last pick. The map they feel possibly most confident on now. In the driving seat, in command, steer this match wherever they want it to go. Yeah, judging by what happened on the slider tech, I mean, Circle Tech could be very close as well. So, mm, definitely confident, comfortable with the last couple of maps that are going to be played. Greg, they're going to need to pull out all the stops. They're going to need to step up, put their best scores on the board. Hope that it's enough. They're going to be far more comfortable on that No Mod 4 coming up than they will be on this, though. Uh, we have seen some decent... Yeah, performances on them when it came to they say the uh, the uh, DT earlier, they seemed relatively all right on it. But with this being more about the tapping, more of a stamina map, and I think Slopdoz's greatest strength with the players that appear to be available will be speed, stamina. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one for Greg, I think. Not very long this. It's just over two minutes. It's pretty relentless the whole way. Not a single break in it at all. It's just two minutes of this. And it does feel very intense. It feels longer than it does because of that. Yeah, very dense in circles. It's something like 1,100, 1,200 combo, if I remember rightly. Yeah, it's way over a thousand combo. In, in a two minute map as well, that's you know, a lot of circles to click. In a short space of time, Considering getting into it, we're about a third or a quarter of the way in. Monk has lost his combo. Raikaho Psyker also. Umo following the trend. Jackpack. The team is on his back. As it seems to have been for a lot of these maps. Lifeline has dropped. And again. We've got a full combo and a large supporting combo from Shiro Hayuki. Jack Pax is trying to fight off, standing against it. Stalwart in his defense. It is all on him. I mean, with the combos from Slop Dozer, it's... Shirahi Yuki, I think, is holding on a little bit. Raffis seems very comfortable, though. A break from Raffis would be very surprising, but you never know. Yeah, Shirahi Yuki could go. Absolutely in full park. Yeah. He goes, Shirahi Yuki, as you said. And now, look, supporting combos. 500, 500, and the full combo. Yeah, it's with them. Lifeline breaks. Yeah, it's with Greg right now. Oh, Jack Packs breaks. No. It's all over. He Surely all at this could. point. It's gonna oh, take a break from Rapids. That FC has to drop for Greg to stay in this. For them to yeah. stay in the tournament. Fumo doing his best. Taking the helm in the driver's seat. Trying so, so hard, but Raph is just way too comfortable. It's just absolutely in his skill set. He is in his prime. 
I mean, you never know. Your Raffis could have broke, but it's just so unlikely on a map he like does this. does break. Uh, uh, yeah, just before the slider, I think. But... Like the, the fifth to last note, maybe. But this, uh, this was definitely Raffis. A Raffis difference. Yeah. 950k on this. 1,400 notes. Lots of, uh, lots of circles to click, and he clicks definitely most of them. With a great accuracy to 99%. And the vast majority of them. There you have it. Slot dozer. With some uh, close calls. Some scary points. Definitely wasn't as uh, mostly one-sided as the scoreline suggests. Seven maps and five of them to slot dozer. But it could have very well been four to three or even five to two. Yeah, it was it, it was a way. really close one for sure. I mean, Slapdoze are just having a tiny bit more on some of these maps. It's hard on Greg. He had some great individual performances. Jack Pax kicking himself a little bit. He had a great game. Jack Pax definitely the standout for Team Greg. Uh, and when you when you look at the scores, really, you look at the team performances. Greg definitely have a more consistent skill level across the members of their team, but. Those uh, standout performances from AR7 Slopdozer, Raffis, Lifeline. Yep. When you step back and look at it from the bigger picture, it's their scores that pushed them over the edge and towards the victory. And I do have to say, I, it's been on my mind and I, I do feel a little bit bad mentioning it, but Lifeline last year was completely glossed over by so many players in um, Konyo Cup 2. As a player, everyone expected him to only be good at AR-10 and above and, and aim and stuff. And you look at that player everyone thought he was last year to the player you see today. Really incredible how, how much different... Well, how much of a difference there is in the perception of him and his skill set as a player now. Because he he does he deserves to be known as one of the better players in this game and in, in the tournament scene. Nah, I I totally mirror that. Like Lifeline has is shown over the last year or so that yeah he he can compete up there with the very best. It's been brilliant to you know see him do this and finally just prove you know, you know prove that his rank isn't just there because of his aim. He has the ability on this sort of stage to. To do well on a variety of stuff it's awesome to see it's always great to see that always great to see it and we'll see more yeah, very of well the played bracket. yeah indeed harder and harder maps much more uh much more in his skill range because of course you can be uh mildly inconsistent but if you have mechanics to back that up that that quote-unquote mildly inconsistent won't really change your scores across any difficulty of maps you could score 600k on six stars but then when it gets to late stage and you score 600k on 7.8 stars yeah that that's it it goes from being mediocre to quite good actually and yeah. i'm expecting lifeline to really pop off in the later stages as well as a lot of the other members of his team of course yeah, Slapdozer are a team that, that, you know, they scale so hard because their skills generally stay the same until you get to, you know, finals, maybe even grand finals level. They get scarier as the tournament goes on, and that is an, it's important, it's an important thing to have. You can have your tournament players who can do well on the early pools, right? But you got to have the players that come in for the late stage and they can do the 600Ks on the, the ridiculous maps that the tournament players get capped on. It's, it's a very important thing to have. The thing is, you got to get there, and well, Slopdozer, they're going to get there because the pools are going to start getting harder from next week for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely quarterfinals now. We're getting into the named rounds. It's not the it's not the round of numbers now. It's the named rounds. Yeah, the the ones that have more more letters, less numbers, <laughs> and and longer games too. To Complement those letters, you see, because it's it's best of three sets next week so the games are actually going to be quite long and there's going to be a lot more mind gaming and you know 
having to prepare for later rounds, being warmer for later and having to swap things around. There's going to be a lot more to it from next week when it comes to yeah, the, the flow wait, of the personally. games. Yeah, that, that's where the, this, this format really comes into its own, right? The mind games are so strong, so from next week, be sure to stick around for those.